And I think we have to be careful that, you know, we don't get sucked up in a charade. Because it's very important that this doesn't become about man, but it becomes about God. So I think in that spirit, I want to talk about actually I want to go back to Mark 8 and this is when we saw at 36, 37, 38 we read this last week but I want to focus in on this because I think this is really the core um, of what we're talking about now with the world church really and let's, uh, let's read this together 36 for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Amen. Unto you. I want to take our attention to here because I think last week we talked about this and I shared some of the things that we had to go through when we got chased out of the palace and, and things like that. But I want to focus in on 38 because it says, whoever shall be ashamed of me, and this is Christ speaking, this is Mas Ma Messiah speaking, Whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed. If we are ashamed of God, God also will be ashamed of us when he comes. And I think this is such an important scripture to really digest at this time. Because we're really not fighting a battle with flesh and blood. This is a battle, this is a cosmic battle. It's spiritual warfare, as the scripture talks about. There is an evil force. There is Satan is real. And he does use instruments. And he does use people. And I think this scripture is so important for us to meditate on. It's very interesting. I, I, I try to put all my thoughts down onto the PowerPoint so I don't forget anything. This is, these are not easy speeches to give because these things are very real. We had to experience them. They're filled with so much emotion and pain. So much, so many hurtful things. It's not easy to share. But in the wilderness, God led us when I look back on it, the last two and a half years, God led us to study certain things. For me, I never studied politics before in my life. I mean, I studied theology, studied religion, I did lots of meditation, <laughs> you know. Um, 
study different religions. I never was interested in politics. In fact, I thought that spiritual people should not study politics or should not understand politics. It's not spiritual. Um, but it's interesting, when I came to the Midbar, or the wilderness, the Midbar is wilderness in Hebrew, and it comes from the word Dabar, which means the word of God. So the Midbar is a place where you hear the word of God. But why would he lead? Why would he tell me to study politics? Why would he tell me to study how politics is used to control populations? How a predatory class uses the understanding of politics to create control. I mean, people thought we were crazy talking about this kind of stuff. Because we were looking at things like the Bilderberg Group or the Davos Group, the alliance of monopolies, the bow tie networks in the world, in the real world that happened. Monopolies, powerful transnational corporations, central bankers that use their money to control the money supply so they can get control of governments. They can get control, they can buy politicians. We talked day after day, service, we studied service after service how even the presidency is up for grabs because we have unlimited campaign contributions now. Big corporations can buy the presidency of nations. We looked at also how historically the money changers, the central bankers were responsible for actually starting wars, funding both sides of the wars. Because if you bet on the Broncos and the Patriots, whoever wins the Super Bowl, you win. We saw these techniques that are used by a predatory class to actually centralize and monopolize power to them. We also came into the presence of God's warning and His judgment. We also looked at the harbinger. This came into our presence, this came into our midst, and we started studying God is warning America. He's warning the free world. A world that is turning from Him. A world that is desecrating. Desecrating the countries that are consecrated to Him. We looked at these things, how God's judgment comes upon Israel when they're defiant. When they don't turn from their wicked ways and repent and pray. We also see in, Christian, uh, in the world at large, the third point. The opposite of the third point, I, I would say, is that Christians are being targeted as radicals or having a radical ideology by the establishments of different countries. Notice how they don't really target Islam, but really Christianity has been targeted. We have talked about that so many times. But I came to the Midbar and I came into a greater relationship with Jesus. One of the first revelations we receive is Father and Jesus are one now in the spirit. Yes. Yes. In the spirit world, they're moving together as one. Yes. We found that to be real. We saw the miracles happen before our eyes. People who were sick, people who had cancer in their eyes removed. We saw these signs of wonder in the midbar. And I wonder why, God, why are you leading us? Why are you leading us to see these things? Why is it necessary that we observe these things? You see, when we actually look at our church hierarchy, we talked about it last week, about it, we actually think the church is like this. This is what we think how the church is run. The world church. We think, of course, two fathers was at the top with two parents and two mothers there. That the order will come down through WMD as World Mission Department. Of course, when I was uh, crowned a successor and made the international president, I was the head of the World Mission Department. And so all the memos, international memos, all the 
things would come through the World Mission Department to Korea, Japan, the Japan Church, USA Church, Europe Church, Australia Church, Africa Church, everywhere. Right? This is this is probably how we think the the organization is structured. Right? Yeah. I would say this is quite common. Yeah. But just like the real world where we think the president is actually in control, where we think the president is acting on his own, where we think the president or the leader of the nation is the, is the power, most powerful man in the free world. Isn't that a common statement that they make the president of the United States? is the most powerful man in the free world. No, he is a... He is a salesman for the most powerful man. In the world. See, this is really how the actual power structure looks like. This is how the actual church hierarchy looks like. The world church, true mother, is not at the top. This is what people don't understand. There's actually an alliance of groups, about three key groups that are in control of the church. One of them, obviously, you know, is very obvious, is Chung Kung. That's one of the groups. There's, other, there's, two, there's also two other main groups. And what's interesting about these groups is that they don't actually like each other. They're actually competing to create a monopoly of their group over the other. But they decide to work together for a common goal. What they'll do is also monopolize the queen's time. So they'll try to take up as much time during the day with at least some people from their group so they can push a particular agenda upon the queen. You understand what I mean? These groups are essentially monopolies. They are monopolizers. They're, sim they're very similar in spirit to the predatory elite who wishes to monopolize power. Actually, to, and then to behind the scenes, use politicians and use presidents and use royal families to do what is beneficial for them, but they're behind the scenes. You don't know, the general public doesn't know who's really pulling the strings. And so they have what is known in politics as plausible deniability. We'll get into that a little later. This is how the real structure is comprised of. We think it looks like this. We think that's how it works. This is the total ignorance of the normal member who does not understand the real structure. You know, there is a psychological syndrome, and we've covered this. We've covered this so many times in analyzing how politics is used and or terrorist groups can be used. But there's one phenomenon that happens, and it's a very interesting phenomenon because I think it's very relevant. The Stockholm Syndrome, or capture bonding, it's a psychological phenomenon in which hostages express empathy and sympathy and have positive feelings towards their captors, sometimes to the point of defending and identifying with their captors. These feelings are generally Consider it irrational in light of the danger or risk endured by the victims who essentially mistake a lack of abuse from their captors for an act of kindness. Stockholm Syndrome can be seen as a form of traumatic bonding which does not necessarily require a hostage scenario but which describes strong emotional ties that develop between persons, where one person intermittently harasses, beats, threatens, abuses, or intimidates the other. 
just yesterday, I don't know, somebody sent us the uh, the uh, video of when Father crowned us. Oh my goodness, what a... I, I just... It's like I'm watching a movie. I was watching that, and I was like, it felt like I was watching a movie. It didn't even feel like that was, you know, that happened. It was like, who are those people? And it's in the palace, and everybody's singing, and Father is giving this incredible blessing. Oh my gosh. And I see Mother. She's so happy. Mother was so happy. When I was giving my speech, and I was so nervous, you could tell, I was so nervous. I was like shaking up there. And Mother was kind of like laughing cutely at my shaking. It was adorable. She was actually very proud. I'll show you the video one of these days. I don't have it here. But this is what people don't understand. These three main groups, they constantly, always, psychologically, threaten mother. Oh, mother, if we do this, oh, we may have this machine. Oh, there's these legal issues. I, this is what we, this is what in the inner circle we always call, oh, the legal issues come up again. Oh, there is this legal issue if we do this. Or anything that they don't want, they will say, oh, there's some legal issue there. It will constantly use this tactic on mother. This is, we had to see this for years and years and years. See, our queen is a hostage. This is what people don't understand. You think she's up there alone. She's ruling the world church. You think... She's making all the decisions. But you don't know the inner circle. You are not part of the inner circle. The reality is, is that she is not in control. The orders that come down from there, and you know, your local pastor is probably going to be a nice guy. I, I, he's way down the chain. I mean, he is nowhere near the, lo the inner circle. You have to be maybe at the national level to understand it. That's it. That is, if you're a part, if you're a leader in one of the main national churches, Korea, Japan, America. But if you're in a smaller church, you may not even be even included in that. But once you become a national leader in the major churches, then you will start understanding who is the who are the hidden rulers. And once you get to consular director and above, you will start seeing very clearly, and you will have to kiss the rings of not only true mother, you have to kiss the rings of the hidden rulers. What I call the demonic alliance, the dark alliance. You will have to kiss their ring. You will have to get their blessing. If you cross them, they will come after you. If you help them, they will reward you very, very well. And of course, it's with money that they're stealing from members. So I want to look at some of the things that I talked about last week. But we're going to go in depth a little in each one of these. These are some of the major things that were changed after Father passed. And notice, right after he passed. Not a little before. Not discussions before, or two years, three years before. No, right after he passed, there was a mad rush a mad rush to start changing and erasing all the declarations and major ceremonies, major covenants. 
were targeted. In Chanigo, there is a king. Amen? Amen. There's a king. And the king gets to decide what will be in the kingdom. Nobody else gets to decide that. The king gets to decide what the national anthem will be. What will be the spirit of the nation of the kingdom of God? Chanigo means the kingdom of God. The king gets to decide what will be the spirit reflected in the anthem that will be our spirit of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Look at the song that Father chose. It's a blessing of glory. I, there's one verse missing here because I got it from the web and they didn't have a third verse. Okay, but there's one more verse. Obviously, when we sing it, when we sang it today, we saw it. But look at this. This was in the death camp, torture camp of Hunna. Father wrote this song, birth conceived in the torture chambers of Hunna. And look what he's singing about. He's not singing about woe is me. No. He's singing now the light of glory arises like the sun that shines on high. Awaken to freedom. He's praising God in the midst of death. People dying while they are a famine, not being able to eat. Other prisoners coming in and ripping out the, mouth, the rice balls that are in the people's mouths to eat it for themselves. In this kind of torture death camp, where he's being stripped, where he's being tortured, beaten. This is the song and spirit of the kingdom of God. We are called to bring back the glory to the life of God above. Now the Lord in His greatness fills the universe with time. This is while He's being tortured. This is the spirit out of which the kingdom is born. From the dark of death I awaken and rejoice to live in grace. When the one who came to save me holds me tenderly in his embrace. Lord, mercy. Yes, mercy yes. Thank you. That is the spirit of the kingdom of God. Who else but Satan would want to change that? Who else but Satan? would want to get rid of this as the spirit of the kingdom of God. This was the battle that we had in the palace at the Father Palace. You had these three monopolies coming in. They had already had long relationships with Mother. Two of them were hidden. Actually, they were not even leaders when Father was here. They were not even mid-tier leaders. But they rose quickly to prominence. Right in the back of the other monopoly. <coughs> and this was the advice. You see, Satan... <laughs> Satan doesn't come in and command you to do things, folks. Satan will suggest for you to do things. He won't say, oh, jump in that, jump in there, go to that club, do that, do, do that, go. He won't say, he'll come and say, oh, you know, maybe it would, be, it would be fun if you did that. Hey, maybe, maybe it would be really cool if you took that drug. If you did that thing, you sleep with that girl, whatever it is, he comes and suggests to you. Suggest. Because he wants to say, you chose to do it. That's right. Look at what they suggested. 
about the blessing of glory. The song is too depressing. We need an uplifting song. We need something that represents the new age of Chaniyaguk. We need something that's connected to the to the uh, to Chumkum Palace. This is the suggestion that you are giving to a queen who is vulnerable. She just lost the love of her life. She lost her king. And in her vulnerability, come in and emotionally tie and empathize and pretend you are the one who truly cares and understands all the pain and sorrow. And then suggest. What did Father say when he was in Pungnam prison? He said, even when I was tortured to the point where I threw up blood and collapsed, I prayed, dear Heavenly Father, please do not shed tears over my blood. This is going to be shameful blood. And any tears will be soaked in lamentations and resentment. I do not want heaven to sympathize. Therefore, I did not pray for myself. Even when I went to prison, in the light of the world of heart, this is what one must do. <coughs> and they said, Oh, so depressing. Blah. That's like so negative. That's like so depressing. We need something more uplifting. Forget the prison. Forget all the tortures that the Messiah had to go through to save us. We need a happy, 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 happy song. other than the spirit of Satan would twist this like this. Who else than the spirit of Satan would twist it so that we separate from the spirit of the kingdom? This is the structure that true father mandated will be the structure. It was where father of course was at top then the order would come through to true mother. It would come through the mission department Whereas as the international president, I was there to be a check and balance. And then they would be distributed to Korea, Japan, etc. So what do you think was the primary target right after Father passed? What's problematic in this little structure that Father created? If you are the three, if you are the three hidden rulers, you have a little bit of a problem. And at that point, I wasn't bald. But that problem would be right there. You need to get rid of that. You need to get rid of that. Check and balance. So that if you can get control of your mother, you can get control of the whole church. And that's what they did. There was a mad rush after we, after Father passed. Mad rush to fire Kukchiyong. Because they thought he's very strong and he's a, he's a good fighter. And he cleans up the house when it comes to corruptos. Right. And he keeps them accountable. So they of course mad rush to get him out. And then of course mad rush to get me out. Again, we don't harbor any feelings of anger to other people because we know they're possessed. 
They have a spirit of Satan that is behind them. It's not a battle between flesh and blood. Amen? Amen. And then we got to the scriptures. The scriptures, my father said, you should realize that everything I have taught you is in accordance with the reality of the next world. And follow these teachings. In any event, this is a path you all need to tread. Unless you follow the teaching of your true father, you cannot cross over the summit. There is no other guide. This was the next thing on the list to target. After the structure, after the spirit of training group, the anthem, the next thing was the scriptures. You see, I am of the humble opinion that if the Messiah decides what will be his scripture that will last in eternity, you can't change it. If he decides what will represent him as a king, then no one can change it. Because if you do, you think you're the king. Uh 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 And you're not the king. You are not Messiah. You are not the king. These were the suggestions that were made. Oh, mother, it is, it, it is, uh, that's, it's so repetitive and it, it repeats itself over and over. There's so many rep- repetitions and it's very unorganized well in their humble opinion. It's not, it's not organized well. Notice that Satan never comes in with his back wings and, you know, flapping coming in the room. He comes in with his flapping. $5,000 Versace suit with his necktie, pinstripe, clean cut, you know, shiny Italian sh- designer shoes. Oh, yes, Father and Queen, yes. Oh, you look beautiful today. Oh, you just look radiant. That, that, that new haircut you have, oh, beautiful. Common base first. Make a common base. Oh, we have just a, a very brief presentation. We have some suggestions. We would love to show you if you have time. But thank you so much, Your Majesty. Oh, there's problematic teachings of True Father there. Problematic teachings. I guess we get to decide what is problematic. You see, I, I think that if the Messiah read his own scripture 11 times, every day you're going okay, and he said that will be the scripture, it's over. That's it. Yeah. He said, that means finish, 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 completely finish, completely finish, finish. Yeah. When he says, one of these sentences, you think they may repeat, but one of them will save somebody in the future. Right. You don't know who it will save. Right. You change one word, and you are killing somebody. Right. You needed that word. You have just killed somebody who would have been otherwise saved by that word. You just killed them. You see, you're not the Messiah. Messiah gets to decide what his word will be. There are statements about people or chunk or blah, 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 about this or that. Oh, yeah, that's somewhat problematic, etc. Recent words are not included, etc. Oh, yes, oh, okay, yes, yes, I think. I mean, it'd be so wonderful. You can package it in a really beautiful way. And oh, the design would be so beautiful. And misdirection. Oh, we'll have a beautiful box. And oh, here we have a sample of the box. And oh, it's so beautiful. It's golden and blah, blah, blah. Oh, what beautiful. Oh, that's not. All this 
I already had worked for years to create that kind of capture bonding psych- psychology, spiritual imprisonment. Now multiply with now a mother who is grieving because she just lost her king and her Messiah. The family pledge. Which one said? We need a family pledge. Which one is it? We need it. That's the way it is. It will be the motto for thousands or tens of thousands of years. It's amazing. What's more amazing is the family pledge didn't last two weeks. Didn't even last two weeks. Until it was redacted. The one that Father himself written by his own hand didn't even last two weeks after his death. Even when he said it has to be the model for thousands and tens of thousands of years, which in Asia means forever. That's what you mean when you say other men say it means forever, ever, and ever. What was the suggestion given to do this? Well, you know, there's not really any mention of Chanyo Guk in the pledges. And uh, so maybe in the eighth pledge where we talk about the complete testament, we can get rid of that and we can bring Chanyo Guk. <coughs> this, of course, effectively cutting all ties with our roots. All ties with providential history. All ties of the Old and New Testaments will lead to the completed Testament, severing those ties in our pledge. Severing our roots. All the way back to Adam. Who else? Who else? Who else would, would do this? I know my mommy won't do this. <coughs> she lived 50 years of her life. 50 years of her life. Serving Father with absolute faith, love, and obedience as the king. As her king. And as her Lord Messiah. That's why we all loved her. That's why we all look up to her. Every single one of these things go in direct opposition to every single day of her life with Father. Which is the reason why I know she is a hostage. Oh, and uh, oh, if you were Satan, if you were Satan, what else, what main thing would you tell you to change? If you were Satan, what else would you change? If Messiah came to the earth to give the blessing of marriage and the covenant of the marriage of the Lamb to all peoples, and he wrote that covenant by hand, and every single blessed central family in the history of the church was blessed Married under that covenant? What would you do if you were saved? Why do you all like me? Because I go through suffering to save you. Liberate all of humanity, God says. Unless I suffer, you cannot receive the blessing. Even if you wait billions of years in the spirit world, I made the impossible possible through my suffering and enlarged the domain of this precious blessing. This is something glorious and brilliant for the spirit world and for the physical world. It is the glory of the blessing. It is the most sacred gift that God had wanted to give since Adam and Eve. in complete covenant with Him. That is what God wanted to do with Adam and Eve. Bless them. 
to see them be fruitful and multiply, have children and a beautiful grandchildren. See them build the kingdom. This is how we know this has been God's heart from the beginning. But this was targeted. The blessing was targeted to be changed. Notice how whenever Satan does something to tear down what is God's, he used, he twists it. He twists it. Notice he doesn't get rid of all of God's words. He just changes it around. So, oh, we we'll just we just changed it around a little bit. That's called spiritual warfare, my friends. That's called who are you coming under dominion of? And this blessed the blessing that was written by Father's hand that all of you, all of us in the world received. There's no more. What did they suggest to mother? Oh, mother, your, your eyes are so tired and weary. Notice that empathy, that common base making. Oh, you suffer, your eyes are so, so, it must be so painful. Oh, maybe we can just shorten the mouths. Maybe we can make it easier on you so we can shorten the vows. That true father died and died and died for. We can just shorten them. Oh, it's you know, it's it's so tiring on your eyes. Oh, we live in an age of technology where you can simply just play the recordings of Father doing this. And at the end, Mother could say, do you accept? But notice how saying, he knows he can use the radio or the little tape recorder to play the Father's voice. He knows he can do that. That's what we were saying. Don't change the vows. Just do the recording. God. But no, we have to change them now. We have to change them to make it easier for mother. Notice that? Notice how it's always for mother, right? We're going to, you know what this is called, Biblically? Oh, this is called desecration. This is what it's called. It's called desecration. When you desecrate, the temple of God. This is what Antiochus did when he came to the temple in Jerusalem. He desecrated the temple. Now you are no longer receiving. I, I, I know members are going to hate me for saying this because in the last two years, many of their kids gone to the blessing. You're not receiving Father's blessing. You are receiving a covenant that has been written by the hands of archangels. That is what you're receiving. You are not receiving the covenant that the Messiah wrote. And all of us have been married under. Well, what's the big deal? Why are you so fanatic, mister? You know why? Because I believe in Messiah, that's why. I believe in the King, that's why. And what he says, and what he leaves, stay. <laughs> and then you have God. Even God was changed. Father, his whole life prayed, God, have 
Heavenly Father, save me. Heavenly Father, save the nation. Heavenly Father, please don't weep. Heavenly Father, don't cry for me. Heavenly Father, let me carry your cross. Heavenly Father, I love you. Heavenly Father, please don't lament over this time. Heavenly Father, guide America. Heavenly Father, guide America, the world. Heavenly Father, guide us. He didn't pray to Heavenly Father because he is a chauvinist or a misogynist or a phallocentric man who hates women. He prayed to Heavenly Father because the principle says, yes, God has masculine and feminine within him, but he is the subject position to humanity, which is the object. So when you pray to your father, you're praying to the subject, the absolute subject of your life, the center of your life, of everything. Oh, mother, you, you are also God. You are also God. I mean, I mean, you are also Messiah. This is my daughter. You are also God. You know, divine principle says there's a masculine femininity of God. So there's heavenly father, there's heavenly mother. You also are God. And of course, they also tell their true children that. Oh, you too. You have a divine light within you. You are gods too. Yes, you are. You see, folks, this is called the move away from monotheism. It comes to atheism, and then it's a slippery slope. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that in the future, you will have members of true family, it could be third, fourth generation, who say, I am also God. And so is everybody else. Like every pagan religion, like the Egyptians, like the Assyrians, like the Babylonians, same different masks, same relativism, same everybody's God and there's no God. Same thing. Other than the fact that you also have a real issue. If Heavenly Father had a divine Heavenly Mother, well, he would have no need for an object partner of love. Well, I guess that means the principle is completely wrong when it says humanity was necessary to be an object partner of God's love. Oh, well, Heavenly Mother was there. Well, he, that, she's a multi-dimensional divine being. She can relate with her on so many different levels, not these three-dimensional clay, dust-formed people. You see, once you depart from God, it is endless. And this is what we told them. We were on our knees in the palace of God. I was on my knees. I had my head in mommy's lap, in her lap. I had my arm around her, crying in her lap, saying, Mommy, don't do this. Please, don't do this. If you change the scriptures, I study religion. If you change the scriptures and the traditions, there will be never unity again. Because you will have communities that follow Father's scripture and you'll have other communities that follow Mother's scripture. And then you'll have these other relativist communities who think they're very creative and say, hey, we'll just accept both. That's not creative. That pattern is everywhere. Don't think that's creative. You're thinking about that. No. That ain't creative. You see that in every generation of everywhere in history. That's not creative. It's not innovative. It's stupid. It's the same relativism. See, I study philosophy and I study psych psychology and I study religion. So I told mommy, if this happens, if you do this, mommy. If this becomes official, it's going to be split forever. Does Father want that? No. 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 I, asked, I asked her. That's what I was asking her. I asked her, did Father want that? Does he want to see his 
condition has been split. we see a huge cultural shift now that has overtaken the church. We see that if you praise Father, you have some person coming up to you and say, hey, what about your mother? What about mother? You deny mother? As soon as you want to praise your Messiah and your King, you get an insecure, self-appointed person who wants to judge your faith and say you don't believe in the queen and true mother. This is nothing other than a demonic spirit. Whenever in the church, when, ever in the unification church, whenever, when, was it taboo? When were you ever attacked for praising the Messiah? When? Name one time. When? Never. Never. Well, it doesn't exist until now. You see, we have so many people who are unknowingly, completely postmodern humanists who are interpreting true parents through their postmodern third wave feminism lens. And let me tell you something from a son of Drew Barris. Okay? Let me tell you something As from a son. In Drew Barris, there is an absolute subject. And there is a king in Drew Barris. I know people want to believe it's 50-50. That would make you feel good in, your, in the postmodern world. And in the humanistic world. Woo! Yes! We... We're so modern. No. You can't bend Messiah to fit you. You must bend your life to fit Messiah. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. If that's what it is, that's what you accept. That's for love. When has it ever been frowned upon in praising the king? When? Now! Now! This is a demonic culture that has been built. And it starts to raise the We call it what it is because that's exactly from where it originates. <coughs> Plausible deniability. What is this? It is a term most often referred to the capacity of senior officials in formal or informal chain of command to deny knowledge and or responsibility for any damnable actions committed by the lower ranks because of a lack of evidence that can confirm their participation, even if they were personally involved or at least willfully ignorant and self-set actions. In the case that illegal or otherwise disreputable and unpopular activities become public, high-ranking officials may deny any awareness of such act in order to insulate themselves and shift blame on the agents who carried out the acts, confident that their doubters will be unable to prove them otherwise. And the lack of evidence to the contrary ostensibly makes the denial plausible, that is, credible. The term typically implies forethought, such as intentionally setting up the conditions to plausibly avoid responsibility for one's future actions or knowledge. That's what's called plausible deniability, folks. Let's look at this scenario. Well, if the truth comes out that there are hidden rulers that have control of mothers psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, that use the power of suggestion to make her to do have her do things for them. What happens if let's say the truth does come out and this is exposed? They can deny it and blame true mother for executing the actions. 
Oh, no, no, we never told her to do that. We never suggested that. She wanted to do it. That's plausible. Language. But if the truth does not come out, well, they can enjoy their little secret. Having all the blessed families now following them. You now are getting married under the covenant written by the hand of archangels. And you don't even know it. That's why when I begin to start giving the blessing, I'm going to give it with the original covenant vow that every person of them received, written by father and given by two parents. If you want to offer your marriage to archangels, go on ahead. I'm not going to do it, and neither are my children going to do it. <laughs> They're going to be married under the Messiah's covenant vow. Amen. Your little secret is out. Tell <laughs> 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 them now. Tell the truth. What will they do? It's so obvious what they do. Because we know the palace court. We know exactly how they operate. We know their minds. We know them very well. We know exactly what they'll do. Obviously, they'll tell members to stop watching or supporting my ministry. That's so obvious. Duh. <laughs> they'll also say, they'll also get your mother to sign a document saying that she actually wrote it. And they'll probably get a little video and put it up and say, Ooh, celebration of the covenant of your mother wrote. Again, see, plausible deniability and blaming to others. <laughs> when they lose their income and people come to receive the real blessing and they start losing their money from the counterfeit blessing they're giving, they probably will change it back. <laughs> I predict they'll change it back. They'll say, oh, no, 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 we never changed here. We'll have to see who did it. <laughs> if you're fooled by that, you are a fool. If you are fooled by that, you are nothing other than a fool. If you can be hoodwinked that easy, good luck. <laughs> and of course, what they will do, and they will, they've been threatening this from Father Father, is they will change the successor. I know. I heard it. I heard it. I'm not surprised. They're going to have a little ceremony, crowning somebody else. But, you understand, the Messiah crowned me three times. You understand that? Okay. He, the Messiah, with true mother, you see, crowned me three times on two different continents. You see, she was involved in that. And what the Messiah gives you as an anointing doesn't leave you. You can try to make a little new ceremony. It won't mean anything. Because what Father gives, when He gives it in trust, especially at that level, it stays forever. And no human hand will change it. So go ahead, try it. Be my best. Because everybody has a video. And there's something called the internet where it's still up. Ridiculous, ridiculous, pitifully, pitifully, shamefully obvious. So what can we do? Number one, we can recognize that true mother is a hostage. She is in a hostage scenario. Yes, she is. You don't want to accept it. All right. That's what it is. You don't want to save your mother. That's up to you. But as for me and my house, we want to save our mommy. We don't want her to be used as an asset so that we can steal and funnel money through her. We want our mommy that we can play around with and jump with and hug and tickle and play around with our children and grandchildren.
We can come to grips with the fact that she's a hostage. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Deny it all you want. Yes, she is. She would never desecrate Father. She would never desecrate what he's given. She would she did it with him. She gave the announcements and ceremonies and the proclamations with him. Why would she desecrate her own self? Ridiculous. And we can repent. We can come before Paul and repent. Repent. I know he has a greater plan, I know. I know he's in control, I know. But I also know I'm an advocate. I also know I'm, I'm not perfect. And I believe we have to repent. We can sing the blessing of glory. We can sing the blessing of glory as the national anthem of Chengdu. That's what we can do, folks. You want to start breaking down the demonic stronghold of sin? Start singing the blessing of glory. Give it space. Start singing it. Stop letting me shut your mouth. Sing it. Sing the national anthem that was birthed out of Hunan. Sing it. That is the spirit of Chanyagok. It is a shame. It is a sin that after Father Christ, there was only one place that was singing the national anthem as a national anthem. When we came to Benjamin, we were the only one singing the national anthem. It's a travesty. What kind of Chinese kingdom of God is that? That's why it has no anointing. That's why it has no power. That's why it has no miracle. That's why it has no Holy Spirit. That's why it has no power to destroy come all things through Christ who strengthens me. They don't have it because Messiah has been desecrated. In the book of Revelation, they prophesy about the, des the desecration of desolation. This is what it is. You know what you can do? You can recite the original family pledge with the connection to the completed testament age that connects us to the New Testament and connects us to the Old Testament and connects us to all of providence going back to Adam and Eve. Yeah. No longer we have to see Christians and Jews as enemies. There are brothers in the same walk towards God. Father gave it as our eighth pledge. Say it. Recite it. What's so hard about it? Read the original Chun Sung Yum Da. Read it. Read it. Read it. Read it. Read it. Read, it. Read, it. read the original Chun Sung Yum. And upload it onto the web so everybody can read it. Put it up. No, it's not being printed anymore. So put it up. Somebody who knows how to computer out there, put it up. Page by page. Let everybody have it. Don't let it be erased. That's the word that Father left for us. Don't let it be erased. Put it up. Read it. Do a hook on it. And if you're a part of the whole structure, I feel sorry for you. I do. Because I know what you're going through. I do. I know what you're going through. If you are one of the people that are way low down the chain, and are just falling along for your little pension and your little salary. What are you going to do when the day of judgment comes? What are you going to do when judgment comes? You going to have an answer with your little pension and your little salary? What are you going to do? How is that going to help you in front of your king? If you're in, you're receiving Money, some, I did it. Your international president did it. I stepped down from everything. I don't take anything from them. Do it. Step down and begin your ministry and save members and bring them to Father. <laughs> and get them to some of the real problem. Stop fearing the hierarchy which has been 
been taken over. You're not defending mother, but you're defending the hierarchy. You're defending the hidden rulers is what you're defending. You're a joke if you're thinking of defending mother. You are clueless to the reality of the situation. And that is a shame on you. Shame on you. Because you're being told the truth. I frequently say to members, you can't handle the truth. You want to know the truth, you can't handle it. I feel like I'm Tom Cruise in that crazy movie. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Don't receive the archangelic blessing. Don't receive it. It is not the blessing covenant of Father. Don't be fool. And if you received it, you didn't know. You were ignorant. So receive the real blessing. Don't receive that blessing thinking that it's a real blessing. It's not. It is written by the hands of the archangels. Do not receive that blessing. You are not a blessed central family if you receive that blessing. I'm sorry to say, you're only a blessed central family when you get blessed under the covenant that the Messiah wrote by his own hand and was given by true parents at every blessing. That's the news. My God, pray directly to True Father. Don't pray to Mr. Kim Park Choi, whatever. Pray to Mr. True Father. Pray to True Father. He is your King. He in heaven. He is your Father. Pray to Him. Pray to Him. Stop playing political correctness with your eternal life and pray to your Father. Because that needs to happen. And I believe it will. Because he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. And we can do all things through Christ. We have no fear because we stand on the side of truth. With a breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith. And the spirit of the sword of the word of God. The helmet of salvation each shot with the gospel of peace. And we are coming after you! You are going down, devil! Oh my God. <laughs> started a ministry in Pennsylvania, the one of the most frequently asked the question is, uh, was, um, you know, okay, you talk about your father in law, you glorify your father in law, but what about your mother? You know, what do you think about your mother? That was the, one of the uh, questions I was frequently asked. This is how I think. I truly love your mother. And I truly respect her for what she has done for humanity. For, to identify um, all the women's uh, sins and corruptions. And, and you know, one woman who actually served uh, our true parents for 50 years told me once about true mother's life. Thank you, Lord. And she was, uh, she, she was uh, when, when, when the first daughter of true parents were born, she was there. So she pretty much lived, saw the whole life of true parents up to now. And she said, uh, she, said uh, she said, a true mother's life is like a, a life that uh, a, a woman who can possibly endure all the pain and agony and all the humiliation a woman can possibly endure. She took that herself as an individual and she, she liberated that with true mother and she made it victorious. So I... I And we believe that. 
we believe that. And you know, in Korea, it's a very common thing that the um, you know, daughter-in-law and mother-in-law have a very, you know, um, stewardess. Is that right? Very. Um, what, what is it? Contentious? Strenuous. That's the word. Yeah, strenuous relationship. Actually, one of the like uh, uh, five uh, big reasons for Korean couple divorces. One of them are because of the they have a, a conflict between mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. And you can ask Korean about that, and it is real. But I'm testifying that she she is a mother-in-law that I can dream. I can never dream of to have. She's always nice. She was a you know, think about it. You know, I don't know how many children you have. I have five children, and my my husband is eleventh child. So by the time when you have like eleventh child, as long as you guys get together and live together, yeah, everything's fine. So you know, I mean, she was he was a lovey. He was his nickname was lovey. Oh, your lovey's wife. Oh, it's okay. It's a little mistake. It's okay. It's okay. It's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna, you know, be a big deal. So I was always loved. So how I, how can I complain? When I took a uh, true parents life course, I actually wrote about the, my final paper was about true mother instead of true father at UTS. And I, I thought, you know, in, in my heart as a woman, I always been close to true mother than true father. And that's the reality. Yes, I love her. And I do respect her. And even my husband, you know, he's such a, he's, it's, it was so funny to see his relationship to mother. You know, when in the day and night he goes into the, his room and he has to, you know, he goes in and to, to their room and he say hi and, and come back. And one one day, you know, my husband, he was going into, oh, mommy, and oh, my, he was uh, calling her name, and then he went in, and then my mother said, oh, oh, don't come in, don't come in, I'm changing my clothes. And he keeps on going into the closet. I'm like, honey, she's changing. We keep on going in. And, like, and then he said, oh, mommy, you look very still slender. <laughs> And then I heard a big, you know, big slaps down on his on his uh, on his back, not on his chair, big slap in his in his back. And I oh, I can't believe you're doing this. I can't believe you're doing this. You're little little uh, what is it, naughty boy. And, and mother used to do that. And and even when she's in the bathroom, he just walks into the bathroom. And he said, Oh, nice one, mommy. Nice. I'm like, oh, please. You're, you're intruding her in the private time. But that's, that's how he is. <laughs> and he's an 11th child. Think about it. How much he's a my youngest son. So he had a, so much a playfulness and bonding with your mother. And think about it. You heard what Hong Jin had to say today. You heard what my husband had to say. Hey, and what will we gain by saying this? Are we starved for attention? <laughs> or are we, do we make a big deal about whatever, whatever, you know? Are we craving for, like, a attention? Or do we purposely want to jeopardize the church? Why do we want to do this? Think about it. That's a very good question. We have to, I, I even have to ask myself. You know, we've been dealing with this since True Father passed away. And it was a, such a dark time we went through. And, but he was so clear. With Gukjin, he was very clear. You know what? I can't get along with this. I cannot go with this, this way. His father, you know, what is crown? People think it's a glorious authority. But what did the Father really say in the crown of glory? It's the path that is marked by people. It is a path that, that no one really can understand. But you have to still stand in the truth. So when Father came in the crown, what does that mean? 
people will test you. Even I will test you too. But will you keep my promise? That's what he was asking. And he said, I cannot break their promise with Father. That's why I'm standing here to say. But you know, I have to be honest with you. I was shaking. You know, one of the my biggest fears is not loved by people. It was <coughs> then when people start criticizing. And I'm sure many of women is like that way too. It broke down when people stole me. And then I was in that situation. That situation. And then I made a, you know, my desperate prayer was this. You know, if, but, but you know what? If you really think that what he's doing is wrong, then come in his dream and tell him you're doing wrong. That was my prayer. You know, you show me your dream, it's not going to be enough because I have to persuade him. So you persuade him. That was my prayer. So I prayed and I did fasting, I did a buying condition. And, and, and I'm telling the truth, this, this dream really happened. And then in the middle of a, one night, in the middle of a, um, one day, in the middle of the night, he woke me up. He woke me up. I was doing this condition. And then he said, Oh, true father came in my dream. I was like, oh, what is it? I was expecting something else. <laughs> what is it? You know what? I, I never told him that I'm making condition. And I never told him that, you know, I wish your father come in your dream and, you know, say that you are doing wrong. I didn't tell him that I'm, I'm praying about that. In the dream, there was a lines of car. And the very first car was a father's car. And then there was a father and Hyunjin him and there was one driver who was driving. And there was a road that, that dividing by, this is, he's, he's explained to me. And then one road is left and one was right. And then your father whispered his ear and said, okay, let's tell him to, let's the, say let's go right. And then Hyunjin him tells to, to the driver and then, okay, let's go to right. And then all the car, then, Behind the father's car, all the car go, go to the right. And then there is a, another intersection. And father whispered to him, James, here, okay, let's go to the left. And then all the cars started to move to the left. And, but Hyunjin, father used the Hyunjin as a mediator to command. And after that dream, I broke down. Okay, okay. Maybe that was not the answer that I wanted. But you know, I got it. I got it, what you're saying. Okay, I mean, it's a difficult. I know if you, after you heard this lecture, you will have a tremendous challenge. Just like I was. We have nothing to gain to say this. See, if we stay, I will be still popular. We'll be still popular. And you are, you will say, okay, you are such a filial daughter. Okay, let's go. And we'll have a wealth, we'll have a fame, and we'll have everything that we that was promised. But why are we doing this? Why do you think those uh, disciples in Jesus' time would risk their life, risk life to be hung at the cross, even upside down something? Now why will they willing to go to that path? Because, because they cannot forsake the promise that they made with Jesus Christ. And you know what? They cannot forsake the promise that we made with Father. Yeah, trust that we need. He did. He gave you promise. Each one of you here. Yes, we do love mother. Yes, we want 
hundreds of birds. And this is the thing. You might say, your dream is up. Mother, you really, I can confidently say, any of you who are sitting here or watching this video can love my husband more. Nobody can love true mother than he's her own son. Hyunjin loves her more than any one of you who are sitting here. Brothers and sisters, please trust him on them. Please trust him on them. And let us, whenever we have a pain, the, the, the national anthem that Father made, Father could rise in that death. But you know what we are going through is nothing compared to what Father has gone through. And you know what? This dark time, let us push it through with joy and grace that Father turns with the blessing of God. All right. Amen. Amen. Let's take a chance again, 155, let's read together. Before the children come forward and resolve this, God can neither alleviate the bitter sorrow in his own heart, nor remove the nail that pierces it. Who will take out the nail and liberate God's bitter heart, which must be released with flesh and blood through the healing tears of love? We should know that God's liberation precedes our own liberation. We should know that this is the path to the ultimate liberation sought by the people of faith. <coughs> Let my mother go. Let mommy go. Let her go. I break your demonic stronghold. I break every curse that is upon her. I break her in the break every single power you have over her. In the name of two mother, it is broken. You have no power over her. You have no authority over her. She will be free. Oh, Father. Father, we come before you. We have no place to go without you. Father, you are the deliverer. You are our savior. We cannot do it with our own flesh and blood. We've cried, Father. I've, I've failed you. I'm sorry, Father. I cannot save Mommy. I repent before you. Please forgive me. I try my best. I try my best. I am just a man, Father. I am just flesh and blood. I cannot do this, Father, with our own power. Even if the whole world church wakes up now, we still can't do it, Father. You have to be involved. You have to be the center of it all. We come before you on bending knee, Lord. You are our king. We ask you to lead us, your people, into the promised land where our queen will be freed. Where she will be free to worship you, to lift you, exalt you, to think about you every day and night, every minute, to live with you forever. Father, we rejoice in the thought of that day. We rejoice in the thought of that day. Lord, we cannot do anything on our power. You, in your anthem, you said how unworthy I am. I am unworthy. I don't deserve to have received anything. I don't receive, deserve to have received your trust. 
But Father, we know. We know that you are more powerful. You have all authority of heaven and earth. Satan's strongholds cannot keep mother in bondage any longer. The chains are breaking. The bondage is starting to crack. The walls are starting to come down. Freedom is in the air. Father, we pray, we know that you are the deliverer and the giver of peace, redemption, salvation. Lord, give us, give us the way. We only follow you. You are the light to our path, the to our path. We follow you. We raise you, lift you, we exalt you. We will create the army of God. Your spiritual warriors who will stand for you. No matter what, we will go to the death for you. We will be crucified upside down for you. We stand for you. And the people of God will grow a spine. And we'll exalt their king. I prophesy this. I declare it over Satan, the enemy. Oh, Lord. Lord, give us your guidance. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with the power. You said, not by might, not by power, but by your Spirit that we overcome and become more than conquerors, that we will celebrate with you at the feast of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, that we will celebrate with you, we will sing and dance and rejoice with you. Father, we love you. We trust you. You know the way. You have a reason for what you are doing. I know. We know. And we repent for our weaknesses, for our doubts. When we become weak and begin to doubt that you know where to go. We, we give it all to you. We give it all to you now. We release this right now. We receive your guidance. We stand in agreement with you. We stand in agreement with your promise. We stand in agreement that we will have a hope and a future and a destiny and that we will be rejoicing in the kingdom that will come. Thank you. We pray all these things in all names. As central as faith. In your precious name. We pray. Let's give God some praise, everybody. Let's, let's give God some praise.